These are the second set of 10 nodes you need to know. Go watch the first set after this one. There's no particular order, so let's look at these ones first. Make sure you watch to the end to see a simple way to work in 3D and an extra super useful tip. Some of the nodes I'll mention will be accessible in the toolbar and for others, use the shortcut shift plus space to search for them. The first node, drop shadow. This does what it says, you can customize many factors, however I often find taking the distance, which is how offset the shadow is from the center of the object, turning that down to zero, whilst increasing the strength and blur, creates a nice little effect, helping to differentiate things. The fast noise node. This is a collection of random points making an interesting background. There's lots of settings here that you can play around with, however I recommend trying decreasing your scale, increasing the seethe rate. This is how quickly the noise moves. Then moving to the color tab, setting the type to gradient and choosing two colors. This can create a simple background that's slightly more engaging than an image with its movement. Next is one of my favorites, the planar tracker. This allows you to track a 2D image to a flat surface like this wall. Start by choosing the tracking corners like placing the points of a mask and track the points in both directions after pressing the set and go buttons to ensure the entire clip is covered. At this point, if you're happy with your tracking, change the operation mode to corner pin. Attach something to the green input and position it with the correct perspective. I recommend making your tracking area the same size or bigger than your corner pin area, otherwise the image won't properly stick to the surface. As a bonus here, if you have the DaVinci Resolve Studio version, you can use the surface tracker to get a similar effect but with moving objects that have much more complicated movement like clothing. The Channel Boolean node. If you have a set of nodes you want to mask the output of, then instead of connecting a mask to each individually, which often won't work properly, add a channel boolean node. Connect the mask into the green input triangle specifically, and then change the operation mode to AND. This allows you to place masks at any point in the node tree, which can be super useful, especially in larger projects. Now there's a few shape nodes. First, the S rectangle node. Bear in mind that with all these shape nodes, you'll need an S render node at the end to see an output. This S rectangle node creates a 2D rectangle shape that can be easily adjusted in position, width, height, corner rounding, and color. Whilst this may seem simple and achievable in other ways, this is a simple node solution that becomes much more powerful when combined with the other shape nodes. It's worth mentioning here that there are a few other types of shape that you can use with similar controls to this. The S outline node. Placed after the shape node, but before the S render node, this allows you to just produce an outline of the given shape. In the controls, you can change things like line thickness, and then also change the length and position of this outline. The length value is a way to animate the drawing on of the outline, and the position value chooses the part of the shape where that starts, allowing you to make cool effects like these. The last of these shape nodes is the S merge and others. Like the rest of the nodes in DaVinci Resolve, the shape nodes have their own little ecosystem. Like the S Merge, this allows more than two inputs. The S Transform node, the S Change Style node, and the S Grid node. There's lots to explore there if you haven't heard of the shape nodes before, so have a go with that. Looking now at some simple 3D stuff, we'll start with the Image Plane 3D. This node is a fantastic introduction to the 3D side of Fusion because it allows you to take your regular 2D graphics or images and place them into the 3D world. For example, here's my output from the shape nodes and I'm now able to have that angled in 3D with me being able to animate this if I want to. It's worth noting here, like the shape nodes, for anything in 3D you also need a render node, which is the render 3D node in this case. In the image plane 3D inspector, you can go to the transform tab and you can now see your controls for this plane. If you want to see this in a 3D viewer whilst making these changes, select the image plane node and select one on your keyboard, ensuring you have dual viewers enabled here. Use the middle mouse button to move, shift plus right click to rotate and control plus scroll to zoom. Next we have the Merge 3D node. This node does what it says on the tin, being the equivalent merge for 3D things. However, this node also has a crucial part in making the next node work too, and that is Camera 3D. Connect this Camera 3D into your Merge 3D node. At first you won't see anything, so select the Merge 3D node and then select one to bring up the 3D viewer as before. After this, select the Camera 3D node and drag it backwards in the viewer to reveal the surroundings. This 3D part of Fusion can be super powerful, so if you'd like to see a whole separate video on it for beginners, let me know in the comments below. And now the bonus. When dealing with any node in the Fusion tab, if it's connected to others, hold Shift and then drag it away to disconnect it. Equally, to connect it back in, hold Shift whilst dragging it back over the connection line and it will connect back into place. 